Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to explain what the old school RuneScape universe is. This is basically a way of visualizing all the dependencies between the quests in the game. And since the game has been around for over 20 years, it means that there are lots and lots of quests, lots of dependencies, and kind of the whole crux of the game is navigating through all of this, uh, all of these quests that you have to do in order to navigate to the next and the next and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just by jumping into one of the quests, something simple like the Grand Tree. If I put my mouse over the node for that quest, it tells me a bunch of information about it, and I'll go over that in a second. But the other thing you'll note is that there are these arrows that go to other quests, and in this case it's indicating that the Grand Tree unlocks or progresses uh, the quest Monkey Madness 1. It also progresses this quest here, and you can see that written in the text in this block here. We can tell that it's a member's quest with the M at the top. It has combat because of the exclamation mark, and it's a medium length quest uh, based on the two dots there. You know that it is from the known quest line, when it was released, who the developers are, and then things like what are the rewards for it, uh, and so on. The other thing we can do is we can simply look up a quest and that will bring us to the quest guide and now we can understand how this whole thing works because ultimately what it's doing is it's taking these uh, pages for all of the quests in the wiki and it's parsing all of these tables and extracting the information for things like what is the official length, what is the official difficulty, what are the requirements and so on. And at the bottom here, we can also get information about the rewards and we can extract simple experience things like this. If there's cases like in the actual Monkey Madness quest where it's more complicated and we have lots of different conditions or things like experience lamps, it's not going to be recorded in here. So we can do that in order to jump around and learn about a quest and we now see what all of these things are doing. The colors are based on this selection here and it's being colored by series. So all of these in the Monkey Madness series are part of the Gnome quest series. And the dots are basically the size of the length of the quest. So lar longer quests like Monkey Madness 2 are larger than smaller quests that are shorter. And you can see that in some of the other ones, like Song of the Elves is bigger, much bigger than any of the other ones because, again, it's a very large quest. Um, so the other thing that we can do here is we can actually interact with a node. And if I click this complete, it actually disappears. So that's actually helpful because what it lets you do is it lets me kind of play through and kind of delete all of the quests that I've completed. And as I do that, the conditions around the quest become simpler and simpler until I figure out eventually, um, in this example, that it's I have all the requirements. Now, it's not strict, so I obviously need to complete this one and that because they were prerequisites as well. But in theory, as long as you're careful, you can map out the quests that you've completed as you go through this. Uh, the other thing to notice is every time I do that and I hide a quest, it actually shows up in this text box here. And this is how you can have lots of control over what's being shown because I can, for example, delete the fact that the Grand Tree was completed. And we should see that here it shows back up. So, for example, you can keep track of all of the quests that you've completed and, for example, keep it in a notepad or like in the rune light notes uh, which quests you've completed as this string. And you can come back and forth and just dump all the quests you've done in here in order to make it match what you've done. And that, again, can paint a picture for any um, particular person's quest journey. Okay, so the next part to try to understand is more of the customization and, and what kind of features are available. So the first thing that you mentioned was the series uh, coloring, the, the fact that the nodes are colored by their series. Um, and one of the things that that lets us do is it very easily lets us pick out what uh, 
kind of which quests are related to each other. So something I can also do is in these settings, um, if I look into, for example, client of Corend and how it relates to X marks the spot, it tells me that X marks the spot progresses client of Corend, and when I click reverse, all it's doing is reversing the direction, so saying that it needs and that is, uh, it changes the coloring as well. So that's just one of the options. Another thing that we can do is we can turn off the physics. And for example, if we find a quest that we really don't like or we don't want to consider, we can move it as far away as we would like. And now when I look at all my quests, I don't have to consider any of the terrible ones. And then if I want it back, uh, I can, I can, bring the physics back on and it'll snap right back. Uh, the other thing that I can do, which is quite nice, especially for things like screenshots, is taking the, uh, the names off because that gives us this really cool picture of just these nodes that are connected to each other. And when you zoom out, you really start to get this picture of this ring of quests that are isolated and then this giant monster in the middle that has lots of dependencies. We let me see things like these uh, spires or these prongs that come out, and those are four quest lines that are specific um, to their own domain. This is all in one particular region, um, and for example, this prong here is also in a completely isolated region. Um, and you can t see the idea here that there may be from this mainland quest branches that uh, start to build their own sort of islands out here as they have quests that are specific to that region and don't know about the characters and the stories involved on the other region for example if there's a new continent or a new expansion or something like that um, so that's pretty cool there uh, and then we can do one more thing that i would like to show which is to hide the nodes that are completed instead of uh, deleting them. I don't know how to differentiate that, but what it means is all of the nodes that we clicked on now have their position restored and they don't uh, disappear, but uh, you can still see them faintly. And if, for example, I remove all the quests that I completed, uh, it looks normal. But this time when I complete the quest, we see this skeletal marker. And the reason why that might be nice is because you don't get all of the physics snapping away. When I hide those nodes, you see it breaks the branches. So depending on what you're doing, how you want to look at it, you may want to know that this is completed but still exists. So that's what that option's for. The other option, Erase, simply adds all of the, uh, all of the quests to this text and it just gives you this blank skeleton. And it kind of tells us that we can go in the other direction. So what if I start with this blank canvas and now I start by completing Fight Arena. And now when I look at that, uh, it looks a lot cleaner. I start with that. I do, you know, Enlightened Journey. I start to do Client of Corend, this one and here. And so now you can start to see how um, I can map out a different, uh, or, or the quest uh, series uh, that I did in, in the order that I did it. And that can kind of help map that out. Um, and then the other thing that we can do is if I get rid of all of that and we go back to normal, we can change the coloring for the quest series. So we did it by series, but another thing that I didn't really talk about is this term tier, you may see in the top, tier three. Uh, which is also called shell and that is basically telling us um, what are the quest prerequisites for that. So when I look at these ones that are uh, black that have shell zero or tier zero, it means that they have no dependencies. They depend on no other quests um, and so they are tier zero. When we look at quests like Client of Karen, it's a tier one quest because it relies on a tier zero quest as a prerequisite. Same thing with these blue ones, they require tier two, so they become tier three. And you can see how uh, we have tier three and so on. And when I zoom out, now we can start to see like what are the longest or deepest chains of quests. And it comes out and stands with Song of the Elves. 
Um, and that is a Grand Master quest that chains through this whole series. Again, we can jump back to the series view and see all the quests involved there for that chain. Uh, and this idea of shell comes from an earlier concept over here, which is this idea of a quest tree, which was the precursor to this, which is uh, not physics-based, but simply orders the quests by their tier, all tier zero quests, tier one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, uh, and where Song of the Elves, again, is the one that stands out the most as uh, being uh, the most, like the one with the deepest quest series. So that's where we get, uh, that's what the shell experience is trying to explain. We can go to difficulty, and it's going to do a similar picture. It's now doing it by the quest difficulty that's stated by the developers. Uh, and that is showing us the difficulty. You'll notice this big blue pocket of special difficulty quests. And the reason for that is they're all related to Recipe for Disaster, which is a special type of quest. But all of the ones that are Grandmaster, like Dragon Slayer 2, those all have the same difficulty, and they're all at the highest difficulty, which makes sense. Things like a portion of interest, or however you say that, is a very easy quest. So we give it green. You can go to the length of the quest, and now there's no special length. They all have actual lengths, and again, we see this kind of... Uh, these uh, giant quests that are Grandmaster that take up, uh, that become the most prominent in this view. Uh, but then you can also see this network of sort of still uh, very difficult quests as they peek in and out. And so that's quite interesting as well. We see, you know, some more long quests at the end of this branch. Uh, we can go to the main developer. So every time we go to a particular quest, it tells us the developer. And for ones where there are lots of developers, hopefully I can find one uh, here, like uh, Monkey Madness 2, uh, it's taking the first one that's just listed by the wiki in order to assign it uh, to that. So we can get this picture here, and let me turn off the names to make it a bit easier to see. And it's quite interesting because here we can see a quest line for an aid of the Myrkey from 2006. Uh, and then we see this update in 2018 by a different developer. So we see that this line that was developed by one person was continued by another. Uh, and even yet still this very basic quest here was uh, done by the, the original creators. So you can see here we have some prolific uh, person in, um, in Recipe for Disaster and so on. Another option to look at is the combat, uh, whether or not there's an enemy to kill uh, or required to defeat an enemy. And you can see that there's lots and lots of combat. There's no real big uh, uh, trend over here, except that we're seeing that lots of quests depend on combat. Now, for people who are very skilled and know how to uh, defeat some of the monsters without attacking them and things like that, uh, maybe this uh, description of combat isn't the most accurate, but that's what it um, that's what it does. As I said, it picks it up from the wiki text. Um, so that's just an interesting view. The other one is whether we have members quests. And this one is also quite interesting because, um, or not too interesting because again, the vast majority of quests are members, but some of them are not. Maybe we can see what sort of quest line they lead into. Um, this one is a skill, for example, so that embeds it there. This one is uh, has relation to uh, unlocking an area, and so on and so forth. The final one here is the year that the quest series came out, and that is also kind of interesting because it's telling us where we can see the most recent quests, things like uh, A Kingdom Divided, uh, things like Land of the Goblins, and so on that came out recently, although there is a cutoff, it hasn't gone through, uh, it hasn't been updated to the most recent thing, but that's basically all the different ways that we can look at this uh, graph. And the final thing that I think is interesting is when we look at the position of all of the nodes in here, uh, what we can try to do is understand how important those quests are or what their relationship is to others. So when we have these uh, these quests in the ring around the main island, it means that they have no impact on any of the 
the is the history or lore within the game but as we dive into the kernel we start to see quests that are pivotal or essential or that have huge uh, connections to other quests other characters and things like that so when we jump to things like fairy tale part one which is related to again the lost city sort of an area unlock um, we see things like uh, the legends quest which is huge um, and others that kind of appear in that center. But if we go off to ones where they're near the end, they may have impacts for other quests, even important ones, but they themselves don't have much impact because they're on the outside there. So that's about all that we can understand from looking at that. And the next thing that's quite interesting is this part here which is the animation panel and what it basically lets me do is if i click this button it's going to animate all the quests and this slider is going to let me choose how fast or slow that animation is and uh, we're going to see the quests basically animate themselves in order of release and you can see more and more quests are coming together they kind of won't interact until we see some quests that have dependencies between them so the vast majority of games at the beginning didn't have any um, dependencies between them but then you start to see things like heroes quest um, come in we have a mini game or sorry mini quest that comes in and you start to now see connections to holy grail so quest series are starting to form we see skills now connecting more complicated quests here and we can sort of increase that speed if we wanted to until we get more interesting things so here we see the legends quest a huge quest that uh, tries to tie in a lot of it um, and then we can keep going we see things more complex chains forming and we can just sort of leave it animating those people put in pretty cool so yeah if you liked that and thought it was interesting you can check out the github page linked here where I detail many more solutions that are interesting and similar or you can keep going and check out the video series which details more solutions like this or you can click around and find more links in the description to find something that you're interested in thanks for watching bye